Good morning, friends. Welcome to the rise on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. We are so thankful that all of you are here worshiping with us this day. Um, a traditional Easter greeting goes like this. I say Christ is risen and you say he is risen indeed. Let's try it friends. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's worship this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. According to the Scriptures, he was raised from the dead. According to the Gospels, he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom remain until this day, although many have fallen asleep. But God has revealed him to us through his Holy Spirit, whom he gave to us and to us. The Holy Spirit who is the Spirit of the Lord, 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 who is the
Let's all rise. I'd search the world And it could fear me A man's empty praise And treasures of faith And never enough I hope that you came along And put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Sing it, church. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Listen, he's the God of the valley. And there's not a place that mercy and grace will find me again. No, Lord, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing, no, better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Somebody say amen this morning. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Easter people, raise your voices and let us with other Christians throughout the world profess today what we believe. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Hear now these words from the psalmist. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of his righteousness. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Say the last part with me. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior now to wash our feet. Now at his feet we bow. The one who wore our sin and shame Now robed in majesty The radiance of perfect love Now shines for all to see Yeah, let's sing it, your name your name, your name is victory, and all praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory, all praise will rise to Christ our King. The fear that held us now gives way to him who lives our peace. His final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. Yes, it is. Sing it. Lord, your name. Your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name. 
spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King, He's resurrecting me. In Your name I come alive to declare Your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me by Your Spirit. I Resurrecting me in your name, I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King, sing it, church. Come on, by your spirit, I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrected. risen Savior. Lord, your name, your name is victory. And all praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. And all praise will rise to Christ our King. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me this morning? Gracious God, you are here. You're alive and we know it because we feel you. You're among us this morning, Lord. Silence all the thoughts and voices in our heads and in our hearts that don't come from your spirit, Lord. Speak through me or speak in spite of me. Speak, Lord God, because we are your children and we are listening. Amen. Jackson, my three-year-old, got in my car on Wednesday of this week, and he had his Easter basket full of eggs from an egg hunt at the Early Learning Center. And he pulled each one out, and he would say, Mommy, I found it. I found 
the good news. Y'all, there is good news for us this morning. I found it. It's here in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Hear the Gospel. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They've taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them he had said these things to her. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Resurrection reversal. The resurrection reverses the implications of the cross. The cross is no longer a symbol of defeat, but a symbol of the power of God's forgiveness and salvation. The resurrection reverses the implications of a tomb, no longer the ultimate symbol of death, the final ending, but a symbol of entrance into new life given in Jesus. The Apostle Paul made one thing absolutely clear in 1 Corinthians 13. The resurrection is true. Many decades ago, there were workmen laying a foundation for a new building in Jerusalem. And they discovered a skeleton that was determined to be about 2,000 years old. And there were some clues. Could this possibly be Jesus' skeleton? Years later, construction was taking place near the site of Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. And they found a skeleton with the nails still in it where it had been pierced in the hands. And then later, they, they found an ossuary, a bone box, and on it was inscribed, Jesus, son of Joseph. But of course, it was empty. No bones. 
You see, because there is no skeleton of Jesus. No bones left behind. Of that we are certain. Why? Because Jesus was raised to new life. The bonds of death were broken. And the body of Jesus was experienced. It was seen and it was heard and it was touched as a lie. There have been great teachers throughout history. There have been people able to accomplish seemingly miraculous feats. There have been people who were martyrs for their causes, willing to give up their lives for their beliefs. But there has only been one who actually came back from the dead and is now alive. Dr. David Siemens, who taught at Asbury Theological Seminary, tells of a Muslim in Africa who became a Christian. And some of his friends asked him, why have you become a Christian? And he answered, well, it's, it's like this. Suppose you were going down the road and it forked in two directions and you didn't know which way to go. And there in the fork in the road were two men, one dead and one alive. Which one would you ask for the way to go? <laughs> this year has been a path we never expected. Hopes and dreams and lives placed on pause or totally rerouted. Yet even before COVID, the world been experiencing a crisis of hope. I started reading a, a book late last year entitled, uh, written in 2017, entitled Homo Deus, A Brief History of Tomorrow. It's by Yuval Noah Harari. He argues that in ancient times, human beings turned to God or to gods only because they did not have control over the world in which they lived. And he asserts, we have that control now. So we no longer need God. In fact, humanity is now God. That's the title of the book. We are our own hope for the future. I beg to differ. Have we ever been in less control of a positive future? Polarization and fragmentation of our society. Political partisanship. Racism. Genocide of the unborn, xenophobia, violence, a lack of social trust, or a complete collapse in knowing who to even begin to believe about anything. And now, global pandemics. If you are looking for people to place their trust in humanity to control and fix all our problems, count me out. I'll place my hope in the God who stepped into time and then changed the very reality of life through one explosive event, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. First Peter says, In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so your faith and your hope are now in God. The resurrection reverses our despair into hope. And the New Testament word for hope is not about some vague possibility. It's about a profound certainty. You see, it, it wasn't teaching, great teaching, that convinced people to leave their homes and their lives. It wasn't an empty grave that convinced people to preach new life against the powers and principalities, even to the sacrifice of their own lives. It was an encounter with a risen <coughs> Jesus. Jesus once had a conversation with Mary about her brother Lazarus' impending death. And she acknowledged that she believed in a resurrection at the last day, a, a general resurrection at the end of time. Jesus said, Mary, I am the resurrection, and I am life. 
And then he proved it by rising from the dead. N.T. Wright says, Easter was when hope in person surprised the whole world by coming forward from the future into the present. What was supposed to happen on the final day had happened now. Tomorrow had happened today. Which means, of course, yes, we will live eternally, life after death. The grave cannot hold us. But it also means that we may begin to truly live kingdom lives before we die. Here, now, beginning today. In our homes and in our communities, in our schools and in our jobs, in this nation and in every nation of the earth. The resurrection reverses time. The future moves into the present. The kingdom, everlasting life, starts now. So we, we stop living only for ourselves. We stop making excuses for our sinfulness. We stop rooting truth in our opinions and preferences. We stop treating people with disrespect and disregard. We stop being agents of death. It's time for a resurrection reversal. We live for God. We pursue holiness by the power of the Spirit. We trust God's truth. We love one another as Christ loved. And we speak and serve life as we care for the least, the last, and the lost. Many of us have been drawn to this new series on the life of Jesus, the Chosen. I think it's a marvelous creative retelling of some of our beloved biblical stories. And Jesus is presented in it in all of his power and all of his truth, but also with a very compelling, engaging humanity. There, there are numerous lines that Jesus speaks that stick in our hearts and our minds. At one point, that the men and women that he had called to follow him were pushing back uh, against his new ways of living out God's love and truth, Jesus looks at them and says, get used to different. Get used to different. That's the glory of Easter. See, before the resurrection, death was all-powerful. Before the resurrection, despair was normal. Before the resurrection, sin controlled all. Before the resurrection, the future was so far away. But the resurrection reverses everything. So get used to different. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hear these words of the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Let us join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right that you are thanks to the grace. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You alone are God. You created form from the void, light from darkness, and life from the dust of the earth. Even when we turned away from your goodness, your mercy was not turned aside. You brought us out of slavery, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and set before us the way of life. You loved the world so much you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, that the world might be saved through him. Your spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, sight to the blind, and freedom to the oppressed. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and won for you a new people by water and the Spirit. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant. Therefore, with your people in all ages and the whole company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Truly holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, again gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and the world for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send the power of your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in full victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. When we break the bread, is it not a means of sharing in the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, is it not a means of sharing in the blood of Christ? You are invited now to receive uh, first the wafer and then the cup. And now I invite you to stand and sing, Thine be the glory.
this blessing. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and forevermore. Amen.